Naruto inherits strong, almost perfect Otsutsuki genetics and the Byakugan from Kushina. Regarding the Tensegan, it will be permanent unlike Tonari's. The Night of the Nine Tails Attack Struck as Minato and Kushina perished, sealing the full Nine Tails inside of Naruto. The third Hokage picks up Naruto and he notices he has almost pale skin and white hair. Naruto then opens his eyes, revealing the Tensegan. Iruzen thinks to himself, what peculiar eyes. As he takes Naruto back to his house, Hiruzen felt Naruto's chakra, which was immense, more than he had, but it was surprisingly warm and calm. Hiruzen felt calmed by it, making the instant not seem as traumatizing to him. Hiruzen compares Naruto's chakra with that of Hashirama, or maybe a tailed beast. Hiruzen then shakes his head and says to himself, it's greater than that. At the age of zero, Naruto has about a third of the Nine Tails Chakra. We skip to Naruto being two and a half, and him being an Otsutsuki. His thirst for knowledge and power is already immense. Naruto can now read, write, and run, although his immense supply of chakra, he couldn't control it. He often ventures to the library to read and study. The shinobi world and various jutsu is what he finds interest in the most. Naruto could feel the hatred of the villagers already. The, the third Hokage would often visit him in the library and stare into his bright blue eyes. As bright as they were, there was always a sense of sadness in them. Hiruzen still feels the immense chakra in Naruto and it is still warm and comforting, as it is the day he was born. Hiruzen had said to Naruto on this day, Why do you spend all your time in the library, Naruto? Naruto replies, It's the only place I don't feel judged. I feel safe here. I also enjoy learning about Shinobi and Jutsu. Hiruzen stares at Naruto with a sympathizing gaze before giving Naruto a hug. He then says, What's your dream, Naruto? Naruto says, I haven't thought of it. I guess I want to unite all the nations and rid the world of evil and find true peace. Hiruzen says, Those are some big goals there, Naruto, but peace doesn't come easy. Naruto's eyes darken as he begins to lose hope his eyes shut as he shuts himself into the darkness. But then Hiruzen then follows up, saying, That doesn't mean it's not possible. You must never give up, especially on a dream of this caliber. Naruto's eyes open up once again with a sparkle of light re entering his soul. Naruto says, In order to achieve my goals, I must be strong, but also intelligent. So that means I must seek to one day receive the title Hokage. Hiruzen replies to Naruto, that's more like it. Hiruzen then bids goodbye to Naruto as he heads back to the village into the Hokage office. Naruto then goes back to vigilantly studying. As Naruto wakes up the next day, he realizes that to be strong as well as intelligent, he needs to be strong physically. And thus Naruto trains himself. Due to Naruto being an Otsutsuki, he finds out his strength is already extreme. He has the strength of a high level Genin or low level Chunin at the age of two and a half. For the next six months, he trains his strength every day as well as trying to control his chakra. Hiruzen and Kakashi watch from afar, admiring his determination and progress. Naruto's third birthday arrives. Naruto's third birthday arrives as Naruto wakes up at 6 a.m. as usual. He opens up his curtains as the gleaming light shone 
onto the wooden floor of his room. Naruto often likes to wake up early in the morning as the village is calm and empty. He stares at the stone Hokage faces, wondering about all the amazing accomplishments they must have made and all the hardships they must have faced. Naruto wonders what he will have to face in the future to attain his goals. He gazes into the abyss as he gets lost in his consciousness. A giant claw touches Naruto's shoulder. Naruto snaps out of his daydreaming and turns around to see an orange beast with many tails. The beast bellows, how did you get here? You should only be able to come to this place once the seal is weakened. With confusion in his eyes, Naruto asks the beast what he means. The beast explains that he is sealed within Naruto and he is a nine-tailed fox. Naruto gets a bit scared but asks the fox. Naruto gets a bit scared but asks the fox. Are you the reason everyone hates me? The fox nods and replies. That is correct. Naruto breathes a sigh of relief, knowing that the villagers don't actually hate him, but what's sealed within him. Naruto hears a knock, and he begins to fall out of his consciousness. Before Naruto leaves, he talks to the fox and says, I'll talk to you later, Nine Tails. Kuruma doesn't say anything, as he can sense something similar to his father in this boy. Naruto walks over to the door as there was a knock. Naruto opens the door and is greeted by the third Hokage. Naruto asks what he is doing here. The third Hokage says to Naruto, Naruto, happy birthday. I've got you a present. What presents? Naruto looks at Hiruzen with his bright blue eyes. As this is the only day that he feels happy, Hiruzen looks at Naruto as a small smile draws itself on his face. Hiruzen is happy that Naruto is happy. Naruto asks Hiruzen, will you be staying for a bit Lord Third? Hiruzen looks at Naruto with a sorry expression, explaining that he can't stay now. Naruto's eyes darken once again as Naruto looks at the ground and says, I see. Hiruzen watches as the brief light in Naruto's eyes fade. Hiruzen feeling guilty tells Naruto, I'll come back and stay a bit later. Okay Naruto. A small glint of happiness can be seen in Naruto's eyes as he says of course. Hiruzen then hands Naruto several wrapped up presents, telling Naruto that he can open them any time he wants as he leaves. Naruto then places all of the five presents on the ground in front of him, gently. He gives Naruto five presents and leaves. Naruto lays these five presents on the ground in front of him. All but one of the presents are the same shape. This one present that stands out piques Naruto's interest as he grabs it and lays it on his lap. It's heavy, he thought. Naruto tears off the wrapping, revealing a large chest. Naruto places this chest onto the floor as he opens it. It contains several kunai, several shuriken, and a short sword. Naruto's eyes light up once again as he has always wanted his own ninja tools. Naruto aspires to be a capable shinobi that everyone respects. He no longer wants strong gazes full of hatred fixated on him. He wishes all the hatred in this world ceases to be. Naruto shuts this chest and moves on to the next present. He opens this present and the contents of the present were 10 good targets for shuriken and kunai. Possibilities swarm Naruto's thoughts. He wants a training ground. He wants to be able to practice to become a shinobi. He wants to get stronger. And most of all, he wants to escape. He wants to escape the hatred harbored towards him. 
Naruto sheds a single tear, wondering what it's like to be loved. Naruto recomposes himself, opening the last three presents. The last three presents he was in gave to Naruto are books on Taijutsu, Genjutsu, and Chakra Control. For the next two years, Naruto trains relentlessly every day. He trains in Taijutsu, Ninjutsu, Genjutsu, and Kenjutsu. At this point, Naruto can also push and pull people with his Tentagon. However, he can either push someone back five meters or pull someone from five meters away. That's the extent of his current powers. He is extremely talented in Taijutsu and short sword Kenjutsu. He can also perform the clone Jutsu and can summon 10 clones as well as do the transformation Jutsu perfectly. He has also found out that his chakra natures are wind and lightning. He can run small amounts of wind and lightning chakra into his blade and he can also perform the air bullet technique. His physical strength is also very impressive. He has the strength of a high level Genin or low level Chunin due to his grueling training methods. Naruto's awaited day has come as Naruto begins his first day at the academy. They do three basic knowledge tests in order to gauge their intelligence. They are given one test at a time and once they are finished they can help collect the next one. And once they are finished they can go collect the next one. They are given one hour of each test. Iruka hands out the tests and once he finishes he says begin. Due to Naruto spending a lot of his time in the library, he has incredible knowledge on all things. Therefore, within five minutes, Naruto hands in the first test. And then within the second. And within 10 minutes, he completes the second. And within 15, Naruto has completed all of the tests. Iruka has told Naruto that he can go outside to the training area. Naruto heads outside as he trains Shuriken Jutsu. Naruto already has impeccable accuracy and always hits the target where he's aiming. After the test is finally over, Iruka calls Naruto back inside. Iruka tells everyone that they can go home and their test scores out of 300 will be announced tomorrow. The next day arrives as Naruto walks back into school. Naruto then takes his seat and sits there in silence as no one has arrived yet. Iruka enters the room and says, Oh Naruto, you're early. Naruto nods. Iruka then continues saying, Can I talk to you for a moment? Once again Naruto nods. Iruka says to Naruto, Naruto, how well do you think you did on the test? Naruto replies, 100%. 100% is what I got. Iruka says, Correct, but where did you learn all this? Naruto then replies once again, The library. I spend all my time training or in the library. Iruka then asks Naruto, but why don't you just go home? Naruto, then silent for a moment, says, I go home when it's dark. It's the only time they don't stone me, it's safer. Iruka looks at Naruto and feels very sympathetic towards him. Iruka then suggests that they go for ramen after school. Naruto nods, and for the first time since the third visited him on his birthday, he smiled. We skip to the next year. Naruto is six, and is now as strong as his base value of the end self. We skip to the next year. Naruto is six, and is now as strong as value of the end base Sasuke. His pushing and pulling forces have also gotten stronger. On the first day, tests are held again and Naruto completes all three tests within 10 minutes, just as last time. The next day would come as, re as the results would be announced. And once again, Naruto got 100%. Iruka would then announce that there are three 
Aruka would then announce that there are more tests. Everyone in the room would groan, apart from Naruto, who would sit there in silence, deep in thought. Iruka would carry on by saying that they will be sparring. Uh, Iruka would then say there will be a sparring competition. The first rounds are Sasuke vs Kiba, Sakura vs Ino, Choji vs Shikamaru, Shino vs Hinata, Tenten vs Naruto, and Lee vs Neji. I'm putting everyone in the same class, as these are the main characters in the show. The winners in these are Sasuke, Ino, Choji, Hinata, Neji, and Naruto. The next rounds are Sasuke vs Ino, Choji vs Hinata, and Naruto vs Neji. The three in the final are Sasuke, Hinata, and Naruto. The final begins, and Naruto doesn't want to hurt Hinata, therefore he puts her in a Genjutsu and makes her faint. Naruto then looks at Sasuke, with a blank gaze, as usual. This infuriated Sasuke, who rushed towards Naruto, but before Sasuke could reach him, Naruto uses Almighty Push to knock Sasuke out of the circle into a fence. We will now have a four year time skip. Naruto is now 12. He has developed his own new jutsu, called Black Lightning. This technique is an S rank technique that can kill people by piercing them. However, if this doesn't kill a target, it can circulate large amounts of electricity through their body. However, if someone has an affinity for lightning chakra nature, at Naruto's current strength, he can only damage them slightly internally. He also has learned lightning stream and can also flow wind and lightning chakra through his blade easily. Naruto at this point uses a black short sword and shuriken as his main weapons. Naruto's current strength is similar to that of his Kakuzu arc shepherd in self. Naruto easily passes the exam, therefore won't steal the scroll of ceiling. Naruto is placed on team 7 with Sasuke and Sakura. This is because Hiruzen wanted this to be the team that Naruto was on. Sakura doesn't dislike Naruto in this timeline, as he has never bothered her or made eye contact with her at that. It was almost as if Naruto was in a different realm. After hours of waiting, Kakashi arrives. As he says, they're all boring because Naruto didn't prank him. Kakashi brings them up to the rooftop and asks them about their goals and dreams. Sasuke's is the same, and Sakura's is almost the same, apart from the part where she says she hates Naruto. Then it finally reaches Naruto's turn. Naruto, for the first time, looks up and stares at Kakashi. Kakashi kind of shits himself when he sees the Tensei gun. He thinks to himself, what is that, those eyes? I've never seen anything like that before. Naruto then opens his mouth and says, uh, let's see. I like ramen and dislike waiting five minutes before I can eat the ramen and my goal is he pauses my goal is to become a part of the village Kakashi who couldn't help but reply with you are part of the village Naruto after all you're a ninja Naruto then looks up at the sky and says no that doesn't mean I'm part of the village I'm a no one if I disappeared the villagers would be happy. I wouldn't be missed by anyone. Even the third has stopped visiting me. I'm of no value. I can be simply replaced by another. To put into simple terms, my goal is to be of value to this village. I want to be accepted. Kakashi is silent, as he doesn't know what to say. Kakashi with no reply says, Meet me at the training grounds tomorrow, all of you, and don't eat breakfast or you will puke. Kakashi uses body flicker and goes off. Naruto says out loud, of course he ignored me. Sakura then looks at Naruto, as Naruto then says, see you two tomorrow, as he walks down the stairs, leaving the building. Sakura gets a 
feeling of pity and now understands why he never made eye contact with her. It was because he was alone. Naruto is at his desk at night and decides to write a letter to Lord Third. He writes, Lord Third, why? Why did you leave me alone? Why haven't you talked to me in the nine years that you left me alone? I've progressed so much. On the night of my third birthday, I waited for you to visit, but you never did. Every day, I hope that you will knock on my door and talk with me, even if it isn't for long. I've become a Genie. I thought you might come and congratulate me, but it seems that I was wrong. Lord Third, ever since that day, everything I see is grey. I can no longer see the colour. After being alone for all these years, I can't see the colour anymore. and apologizes as he passes out on the desk. The next day then begins, and as instructed, Naruto didn't eat, and waited at the training grounds. Naruto waits with Sasuke and Sakura. Finally, Kakashi arrives and gives his usual, I was lost on the path of life excuse. He then explains the rules of the bell test, and is about to save again when Naruto asks, Sensei, can we use attacks that can kill? Kakashi confused says yes, that's fine. Kakashi then says begin, as all three scatter. Sasuke and Sakura are the first to attack. They attack as much as possible, but to no avail. Even when Sasuke uses the great fireball jutsu, Kakashi just substitutes himself out of there. Naruto then finally reveals himself with his usual blank expression and walks towards Kakashi. Naruto stops two meters away from Kakashi and looks Kakashi dead in the eyes as Naruto uses almighty pull on the bells, bringing him both the bells. He chucks one to Sasuke and one to Sakura. Naruto then looks at Kakashi and says, I'll go back to the academy. Naruto awaits for a response from Kakashi with his lifeless eyes, Kakashi finally opens his mouth and says, You will pass. Naruto is a little shocked, as he doesn't have a bell. But he doesn't question, because he is happy for the first time in a while that he's a ninja. Kakashi tells Naruto to stay behind. Sasuke and Sakura leave, and Naruto sits on a log and waits for Kakashi to talk. After several minutes of silence, Kakashi asks Naruto, what was that? How did you take the bells? Naruto then replies, saying, It's one of my ocular abilities. Kakashi nods and then asks another question. You asked me if you could use Jutsu that could kill. What exactly is that Jutsu? Naruto performs with hand seals, and black lightning appears around his hand, similar to the Chidori, but it seems to be several times more powerful. Naruto explains the Jutsu, and Kakashi is amazed. Naruto, I would like to have a one-on-one -on -one spa with you. Naruto is happy to hear this, as he thought Kakashi disliked him. Naruto says, okay. Naruto and Kakashi are on opposite sides of the training grounds. Kakashi then says, let's get started. 
Naruto immediately uses wind style air bullets, which Kakashi narrowly dodges. As or so he thought. A small cut appears on his cheek. Kakashi thinks to himself, this kid, he's strong. Naruto then says to Kakashi, Sensei, with all due respect, I advise you use your Sharing Gun. Kakashi wonders how Naruto knows, but knows that it will probably be necessary as he pulls off his headband. Let's go again, Naruto, Kakashi says. Naruto in this battle is trying to prove his strength, and so he forms a bit of a psychopathic grin as he pulls out a blade. Naruto then runs Wind Chakra through his blade and swings the blade towards Kakashi. Wind slices through the air and through the ground, rushing towards Kakashi. However, Kakashi manages to dodge and uses water-style raging waves, but Naruto jumps out of the way. Kakashi then sees this as an opportunity, as he throws a kunai infused with lightning chakra at Naruto. However, Naruto then bends backwards in the air, dodging the kunai. Kakashi then jumps at Naruto with a Chidori in hand. However, Naruto uses Almighty Push to knock Kakashi back. Kakashi follows up with a Water Dragon Jutsu. Naruto uses Lightning Stream on the dragon, which causes electricity to flow towards Kakashi. Naruto then dodges the dragon in time as he looks for Kakashi in the aftermath. However, he isn't there. All of a sudden, a kunai is against Naruto's neck. It's Kakashi. Naruto then says, I give, you win, Sensei. Although, of course, you have to be strong to be a Jonin. Kakashi then says to Naruto, Well done, Naruto. You are possibly Jonin level yourself. However, I didn't see you use your black lightning. Naruto then responds saying, You're right, but there wasn't much of a chance to. Kakashi says, I see. Well, anyways, mission start tomorrow. Goodbye, Naruto. Naruto also says goodbye and leaves. For the next three weeks, Team 7 completes 42 missions. That's two missions a day. Team 7 enters the Hokage's office and Naruto asks Kakashi. Kakashi sensei, can you ask Lord Third for a higher ranked mission? I believe that the skill of this team are being wasted on D ranked missions. I believe that in order to better the skills of everyone in this team, as well as to boost morale, we should do some C rank missions. Due to Naruto's well thought out argument, Kakashi asked Lord Hokage for a C rank mission. Hiruzen thinks about this for a moment and then calls in the bridge builder Tazuna. Tazuna walks in drunk and makes fun of Sakura, then shifts his gaze to Naruto, and just before Tazuna, is about to make fun of Naruto. Naruto looks at Tazuna with his Tensei gun and releases a small amount of bloodlust. Tazuna stops in his tracks and becomes silent. Hiruzen then explains the mission and from that the land of wave arcs begins. The land of wave arc begins, begins as Naruto is leaving the office. Hiruzen says, Naruto, I'm sorry. Naruto then realises that Hiruzen did read the letter. Naruto then turns back and says, I'm sorry too, Lord Third. I know you're busy. I shouldn't have been selfish like that. Naruto then bows and leaves. As Hiruzen thinks to himself, no, it's me who should be apologising, Naruto. Team 7 now sets off with Tazuna on their journey. Naruto, Kakashi and Sasuke notice some puddles and wonder why they're there as it hasn't rained recently. Suddenly, the legendary Chunin are about to cut Kakashi in half, but Naruto turns around and uses Almighty Push to push the legendary Chunin in the air, and then uses Almighty Pull to smash them into the ground. Naruto then uses Almighty Pull on both of them, and grabs them by their heads, which he smashes into the ground. All of Team 7 watches, and Sakura tells Naruto that that was amazing. Sasuke just looks at Naruto and says, I could have gotten them myself and a lot quicker than you did. Kakashi thinks that what Naruto just did was a serious feat. However, he watches Naruto's next move. Naruto walks over to the tuning and then severs their tendons. Naruto then sees a crow and uses a Genjutsu on it. He writes a note 
ties it to the crow and sends the location of the tuning to the Hokage. Naruto then says, Kakashi sensei, let's get going then. Kakashi says, okay, and they carry on with their mission. A while later, Kakashi shouts, everyone duck. Everyone ducks as Zabuza appears on the sword he just threw. At this point, Kakashi then begins the fight with Zabuza whilst the other three guard Tazuna. The fight goes the same as in canon with Kakashi getting trapped inside a water prison and Zabuza sending out a 30% clone. Kakashi says, you're going to regret that. Zabuza laughs and replies, they're just a bunch of genin, what are they going to be able to do? Zabuza's clone walks towards Naruto. Naruto is trying his best not to become enveloped in rage as green chakra begins to emanate out of his body. This chakra is the Tensegan's chakra. Naruto then appears behind his clone and slices his head off. At this point, Naruto has completely lost it. Naruto then goes towards Zabuza and says, Zabuza, you are now my guinea pig. Naruto then races towards Zabuza in partial Tensegan chakra mode, as well as partial Ninetales aura. Naruto then appears in front of Zabuza and grabs his neck and forces Zabuza to release his arm. He then tries to get Naruto's grip off of him. However, Naruto then uses Almighty Push and knocks Zabuza into a tree. Haku, seeing this, tries to intervene, but Naruto stops him by breaking Haku's arm. Haku goes to attack Naruto again. However, Naruto pushes him towards Sasuke. Naruto then stares at Sasuke and says, Sasuke, you, you take care of him. Sasuke nods. Naruto uses Almighty Pull on Zabuza and pulls him into a kunai. Naruto then kicks Zabuza into the ground, crushing his head onto the ground. Naruto then finishes off Zabuza as more Ninetales Chakra is leaked. As the One Tails forms, Kakashi and Sasuke are fighting Haku. Sasuke gets one three Tomoe Sharingan and one two Tomoe Sharingan in this fight. And Kakashi then finishes off Haku. After the mission is over. After the mission is almost completed, the mob shows up. But Naruto, Sasuke, and Kakashi easily destroy all the mob members, and the land of Waves Arc gets completed. A few weeks later, Kakashi calls a meeting with Team 7 and tells them that they have been recommended for the tuning exams. Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura all sign up. In this timeline, Naruto is currently as strong as Kakuzu Arc Kakashi. Sasuke is as strong as third gate tuning exam Lee and Sakura is slightly stronger than in canon by, but not by much. They then train for the tuning exams. Sasuke unlocks a three turn way Sharingan in both eyes. Sakura learns water style water bullet juicy and Naruto instead of Kakashi creates purple lightning. However Naruto makes it even stronger Naruto has made it so it can be used at short and mid range. With this Jutsu, Naruto can easily take huge chunks out of mountains, although he can also perfectly control his power, so if he's fighting a weaker opponent that he doesn't need to kill, he can make the attack a lot weaker. The written part of the exam goes almost the same, apart from Naruto getting 100%. He still is slower than Itachi and Minuto, but he gets 100%. Then, Anko busts into the room and says the Forest of Death exam is now beginning. She then takes them all over, hands them some scrolls, and they're sent on their way. Naruto uses Almighty Push on trees to find a clear way to the middle. Naruto does this and finds a way to the middle. However, this attracts Orochimaru's attention. Orochimaru immediately blitzes as fast as he can over to where the trees fell. Orochimaru, noticing the devastation that Naruto has caused, decides to go full strength. 
Sakura musters enough courage that she waterbirds Orochimaru. However, Orochimaru easily dodges. Naruto and Sasuke then work to take Orochimaru down. Sasuke can't fight Orochimaru in Taijutsu, so Naruto takes this job. Naruto outclasses Orochimaru in hand-to-hand -hand combat, as Naruto has studied various techniques of martial arts to hone his skills to produce near-perfect results. Sasuke then launches several fire-style jutsu at Orochimaru. Orochimaru is losing this fight, as he gets slammed into a tree with almighty push. Naruto then activates his partial Tensegan chakra mode and proceeds to attack Orochimaru without restraint. Naruto and Orochimaru are fighting equally in skill, but Naruto's power difference is beginning to show as Naruto pushes Orochimaru back. Orochimaru realizes he has wasted too much chakra to place a curse mark, therefore he needs to retreat for now. Orochimaru proceeds to use Body Flicker to get as far away from Naruto as possible. Naruto then falls to his knees as he is exhausted. Sasuke helps Naruto up as Sakura, who did pretty much nothing, follows them from behind. They reach the middle and they reach the middle slightly after the San Shinobi, this being Gaara's team. A couple days pass as the preliminaries then begin. All the matchups are the same, however a few fights go differently. This includes Sasuke obviously wiping the floor with the chakra absorber. Sakura ends up beating Ino. Now we skip to Naruto's fight with Kiba, which at this point is a bit of a joke. Naruto slaps Kiba around using a barrage of kicks and punches. Naruto, standing behind Sakura, is watching the fight, and Sakura says, wow, Naruto is winning so easily. Naruto from behind laughs and says, yeah, I think so too. Sakura then turns around and shouts, Naruto, what are you doing here? Kakashi and Guy also turn around to look at Naruto as he stands behind them. Kakashi then tells Naruto, Kakashi then says, Naruto, don't tell me. Naruto interrupts Kakashi saying, Bingo, it's one of my shadow clones. Down in the arena, Naruto's clone uses a mid-range purple lightning and electrocutes Kiba and Akamaru. The proctor then says Naruto wins, as Naruto's clone dispels itself. This shocks everyone apart from Sakura, Kakashi, Sasuke and my guy. We move to Lee, fighting Gara. It goes the same, however, Naruto manages to blow away the sand before Gara crushes Lee's legs. And for the Hinata vs Neji fight, Naruto is the first to step in. Naruto picks up Neji by the neck and tosses him away. Naruto tells Neji that he's going to be defeated next round. This starts the one month training period. Kakashi is training with Sasuke in Sharingan usage as well as Chidori. Therefore, Naruto doesn't train with them as he doesn't possess a Sharingan. Naruto is told by Kakashi that Ebisu will be training him. Naruto does as instructed and meets Ebisu for training. Ebisu tells Naruto that they will be training walking on water. Naruto nods as, unlike in the original, he respects anyone who's willing to train him. Ebisu begins explaining how to walk on water and then he demonstrates. Naruto, with his incredible chakra control, is able to do this immediately and walks on water first try. Ebisu is amazed and says to Naruto, Well done, it seems I've underestimated you. Well, let's get on to the next exercise. Ebisu then takes Naruto to the training grounds and tells Naruto that they will be sparring. Naruto then says, okay. The spar then begins. Naruto then throws several kunai with lightning chakra infused in them. This catches Ebisu off guard and he gets cut a few times. Naruto then speeds behind Ebisu and kicks him, sending him flying back. Ebisu regains balance 
and throws several shuriken at Naruto and then runs towards him. Naruto throws two shuriken in the air above. Naruto leads back, dodging the shuriken thrown at him. However, Ebisu is now directly in front of him. However, Naruto smirks as the two shuriken that he threw earlier collided with each other and one of the shuriken flew down towards Ebisu. Therefore, he didn't have a chance to get an attack in. Naruto then uses water style raging waves which soaks Ebisu and damages him slightly. However, Naruto then you However, Naruto then uses Lightning Style, Lightning Stream, which causes Ebisu to fall to his knees in defeat. When Ebisu regains consciousness, he praises Naruto, as he says his strength is commendable, and he offers to find him a better teacher. Naruto says thank you, and Ebisu goes off. We now move perspectives to Naruto, who's walking around the village, when he suddenly catches a man peeking into the woman's baths. Naruto then uses Almighty Pull on Jiraiya, and Naruto then holds a kunai to Jiraiya's neck. However, Jiraiya substitutes himself and appears behind Naruto with a kunai to his neck. Naruto sighs as he makes Jiraiya float into the air and slams him into the ground. Naruto then asks Jiraiya who he is, and Jiraiya tells him that he is Jiraiya, the Toad Sage, one of the three legendary Sani. Naruto then bows after hearing this and says, forgive me Mr. Jiraiya, I would like you to take me as your student. Jiraiya thinks about this for a while and said, and then says, what's your name kid? Naruto says, Naruto sir. Jiraiya, then knowing who Naruto is, says, okay, I'll take you as my student. We switch perspectives to Ebisu at the Hokage's office. Ebisu says to Hiruzen, Lord Third, I'm here to suggest someone for the Jonin rank. Hiruzen then says, you are not Jonin, what makes you think that someone you recommend will be good enough to become Jonin? Ebisu replies, Lord Third, with all due respect, this is a special case. Hiruzen then tells Ebisu, go on then, who is this person? Ebisu replies, Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki. He has displayed incredible strength when I trained him. He beat me in a spa without getting hit once. Hiruzen raises an eyebrow to this and says, I see, I will consider it. Now, for the next month, Naruto trains with Jiraiya and he learns the summoning Juzu, water style, dark swamp, and the Rasengan. However, Naruto also developed how to shoot it like a beam, like he did as an adult. Now, we skip to the tuning exams. Naruto beats Neji with relative ease, and Sasuke's fight with Gara goes as usual. However, he beats Gara a lot easier, as he has the three turn wing Sharingan now. The leaf invasion then begins, as Gara runs away. Naruto this time doesn't get put into a Genjutsu and pursues after Sasuke after helping Guy and Kakashi take down the Sand Ninja. Naruto then rushes towards Sasuke fighting monster Gara. Gara hits Sasuke away and Naruto manages to catch him and they decide that they will have to work together to defeat. Gara. Naruto and Sasuke use continuous Taijutsu attacks, knocking Gara around. Sasuke then uses fire release and uses a fireball jutsu as Naruto tells Sasuke to quickly move. Naruto then uses his Rasengan beam to knock Gara unconscious. We now skip to the Hokage's last words, which are who he wants promoted in rank. Hiruzen says, Shikamaru Nara and Rock Lee, I want to become Chuni, and I want Sasuke Uchiha and Naruto Uzumaki to become Choni. The Hokage then dies. We skip to after the funeral, 
where Jirai tells Naruto they're going to go look for the next Hokage, with everything else going the same. However, Naruto, instead of learning the Rasengan, learns a giant Rasengan on the way. They finally find Tsunade, drunk, in a bar, and everything goes simpler than in canon. Naruto defends the Hokage's title. They then take it outside for a fight. Tsunade tells Naruto that if she, that if he wins, she'll become Hokage. Tsunade then says, if you land one hit on me, you win, okay. Naruto smirks as Tsunade says go. Naruto creates a Rasengan in his hand and then uses Almighty Push on Tsunade and then smashes it into a stomach. Tsunade then falls on the ground, coughing up blood, and asks why she couldn't move. Naruto then explains that he used Almighty Pull on her, but he then says, I win, you are now Hokage. Tsunade begrudgingly accepts this and goes back to the village before becoming fifth Hokage. One week later, Naruto, Sasuke, Shikamaru, and Rock Lee are told to come to the Hokage's office. They all meet Tsunade, and she says, Shikamaru and Lee, from your efforts in the recent tuning exams, I want you both to become tuning. Lee and Shikamaru are surprised by this and gladly take the tuning vest. They then stand and listen to what she says to Naruto and Sasuke. Tsunade, turns her gaze to Naruto and Sasuke and then says Sasuke Uchiha and Naruto Uzumaki we believe that you aren't fit for tuning Sasuke and Naruto's hearts drop and Lee says Lady Tsunade Naruto and Sasuke are very powerful can you please reconsider your decision Tsunade then looks at Rock Lee and back to Naruto and Sasuke and says as I was saying, we believe you shouldn't become Chunin. And as the fifth Hokage of the Leaf Village, I would like to offer you both the rank of Jonin. Everyone in the room looks at Naruto and Sasuke in complete shock, apart from Tsunade that is. They both accept their Jonin rank and get the Jonin vests and a bingo book. Naruto, in base in this timeline, is about as strong as Sage Mode Naruto against Pain, and Sasuke is about as strong as his beginning of Shippuden self. We skip to the Sound 4 confronting Sasuke. Sasuke in this timeline is extremely strong as he tried to keep up with Naruto. Sasuke proceeds to destroy the Sound 4 in their Curse Mark 2 stages by himself, which causes them to retreat. The reason Sasuke doesn't seek Orochimaru's strength is because he got destroyed by Naruto. Sasuke finds Naruto and tells him about the ninja. Naruto immediately gets ready to head out and tells Sasuke that they are going to go look for them. Naruto and Sasuke then sneak out of the village in search of the sand fall and after three hours Naruto and Sasuke finally locate the sand fall. Naruto and Sasuke appear and Naruto says, Ah, Orochimaru, we can finish what we started. Naruto then looks at Orochimaru with intense bloodlust. Orochimaru, in complete fear, just reverse summons himself and escapes. Naruto has a sickly smile on his face and says, I guess you four will have to do. Sasuke then tells Naruto to take the two on the right as he takes the two on the left. Sasuke then begins combating Tayuya and Jirobo, whilst Sakon and Ukon, as well as Kidomaru, are fighting Naruto. The two Naruto are fighting are scared of Naruto and try to run away. However, Naruto says, You won't be getting away, unlike Orochimaru. He then uses Bansho Tenny and grabs their necks and slams them into the ground. Naruto then uses a double Rasengan and slams them into the two which immediately kills them. Sasuke finishes up his fight as Kimimaru appears 
with Naruto blitzing towards him and punching him. However, his punch is slightly absorbed by King Mari's bones and it only causes minor damage to Naruto. Naruto then teams up with Sasuke and proceeds to destroy Kimimaru with multiple jutsu and taijutsu techniques. Naruto then uses a giant Rasengan, knocking him unconscious, and Sasuke finishes him off with a Raikiri. Naruto and Sasuke then take away all their bodies back to the leaf, which they give to Tsunade and explain everything that happened. Tsunade is a little angry but then realises that they took out some threats to the village. Tsunade will then go, get their bodies examined. One week later, Jiraiya tells Naruto to come train with him for three years. Naruto accepts this and says goodbye to Sasuke, Sakura and Kakashi. Sasuke will train with Kakashi and Sakura will train with Tsunade. This concludes the end of part one of Naruto. Going into Shippuden, Naruto returns to the Leaf Village, having learned perfect Sage Mode and creating the Rasen Shuriken as well. Jiraiya has also perfected Sage Mode. Kakashi can now use his Mangekyo five times a day, and Sasuke awakened his Mangekyo Sharingan on a mission when he thought Kakashi died. Sasuke and Itachi also swapped eyes, unlocking the EMS. Sakura is a decent amount stronger than her canon counterpart, as she gets the 100 healings mark a lot earlier, pushing her to low Kage level. Sasuke has unlocked his full body Susanoo, and Naruto has unlocked KCM1, and can perfectly control his Tensegan Chakra mode. Three more months pass, and word gets out that Jiraiya has died fighting pain, even though he had perfected Sage mode. Naruto then has his depressed phase, but after Sasuke talks to him, it ignites a flame of determination within Naruto. Naruto then trains for another two months, and gets even better at using Sage Mode, and he can absorb a lot more and last the form for longer. Naruto then hears pain is invading the village, and Kakashi, Sakura, Sasuke, Lee, and Neji are out of the village, as well as Guy. You could say Ten Ten as well, however, what the fuck is she gonna do against Pain? Naruto returns to the Lee village that has been devastated, and Naruto appears in front of Pain in Sage mode. Tsunade is in front of him and almost out of chakra when one of the Pains rush at her. Then Naruto smashes this pain into pieces as he gets angry. Tsunade is taken away by a Black Ops member as Naruto begins combating pain. All teams apart from Kakashi and Guy's team are watching. Naruto gets ready to fight pain. The Black Ops go over to everyone and tell them not to get involved. And in this timeline, the Diva Path has already managed to recharge itself and can use Almighty Push and Universal Pull again. Naruto then decides to go all out and humiliate Pain for his master. Naruto recharges Sage Mode once again and then stacks KCM on top. This startles Pain a little, however Naruto then stacks Tensei Gun Chakra Mode on top of this. The battle went from not will Naruto be Pain to will Pain survive this beatdown. Naruto proceeds to Blitz two pains before the others could even notice. A huge explosion is seen as Shikamaru and Kiba ask Hinata what just happened. Hinata then says, Naruto, he, he defeated three pains already. They look at Hinata with disbelief and the smoke clears up and they can see for themselves. By this point, Naruto had already created a giant Rasen shuriken and thrown it at the animal path. This easily wipes out the animal path. Naruto then rushes at the second last pain and easily destroys it. Hinata then says to everyone, Naruto has taken out five of the pains, it's now one to go. Naruto then rushes at the last pain and uses Almighty Push. 
This sends Pain flying back. However, Pain manages to regain balance and uses Almighty Push on Naruto. However, Naruto manages to cancel this out. Naruto then slams with a Sengan towards Pain. However, he uses Almighty Push. Naruto then uses Almighty Push on Pain. However, Pain is able to withstand the attack. Pain then rushes at Naruto and uses Universal Pull. However, Naruto, as he's going forward, creates a Rasengan, ready to slam into Pain. However, he then uses Almighty Push and slams Pain into the ground. He then slams a Rasengan into Pain, creating a huge indent in his body. Naruto then uses one final Rasengan to make sure Pain is dead. All of his classmates run towards him, and Naruto picks out one of the rods in Pain and stabs it into himself. Naruto then uses Body Flicker to get to Nagato. Like in the original, Naruto uses his Tokuno Jutsu to convince Nagato that he can create true peace. Therefore, all of the villagers get revived. Six months after this, the hidden leaf is getting fixed, and Naruto has begun becoming friends with the Nine Tails, who has told him his name is Kurama. Kurama has respected Naruto as he has become extremely powerful, maybe more powerful than he is, so he must just lend a hand to Naruto. Kurama has allowed Naruto to tap into KCM2 a few times, and is now around the strength of his Sage of Six Paths mode, KCM self, as a team. Sasuke is as strong as himself in the fight against Obito. There, then there is a five Kage summit being held, and things go a lot different. Zetsu tells the Kage that they have an intruder, and this intruder is Obito, currently known as Madara. He appears and declares war on the shinobi world. This starts the beginning of the Great Ninja War. Naruto's current base form is similar, is similar to that of Madara when he was alive, and Sasuke in base is about 60% of Naruto, and 70 when he's enraged. A couple of days later, the Shinobi Alliance is sent to war. Naruto is also sent to war as he can control the Nine Tails now. He fights alongside Gara and sends his Shadow Clones to the other battlefields. The fight with the White Zetsu begins, and with a powered up Naruto, he makes quick work of most of them. Then the Kage is summoned, and Gara fights his father when Naruto fights the other three Kage. Naruto activates Sage Mode and says this should be fun. Naruto proceeds to combat the three Kage, and they are surprised that Naruto is overwhelming them so easily. Naruto then roundhouse kicks the third Raikage and seals half of the Tsuchikage Mu. He then blitzes the Mizukage and seals him with relative ease. Naruto's Sage Mode then runs out, and it's now the third Raikage versus Naruto. Naruto is fighting the third Raikage evenly. However, Naruto then uses a Wind Star Rasengan and manages to destroy the third Raikage's lightning armor and leaves a giant hole in his chest. The ceiling core then seal him and this leads to Mu summoning Madara. Madara jumps down and Naruto and Madara have a stare down. Naruto and Madara are almost equal as Naruto in base has become very powerful. Naruto then creates a Rasen Shuriken and throws it at Madara. However, Naruto However, Madara activates the Rinnegan and absorbs the attack. He then activates his EMS again, and then summons a Meteor. Naruto, seeing this, activates his KCM2 with Tensei-Gan Chakra mode on top of it, and throws a giant Rasengan at it, obliterating the Meteor into dust. Madara claps and says, So Naruto, what will you do about the second one? Naruto then flies up to its side and uses a mighty push, sending the meteor into an open plane. 
Modera then gets his reanimation undone. Naruto later on hears about the Ten Tails and heads straight over. Naruto begins fighting alongside everyone against the Ten Tails and manages to fight Obito, and this time shattering his mask with relative ease. Naruto still meets Minato, and Minato still teleports the Jubi Bomb into the ocean. Kakashi and Obito then have their battle again, where Obito throws the fight in order to seal off his heart. He then absorbs the Ten Tails. Meanwhile, Madara beats Hashirama when alive and absorbs his Sage Mode. He also gains one Rinnegan. Sasuke then arrives to see Naruto in base Sage Mode fighting Obito. Sasuke decides to help out Naruto as Naruto activates the KCM2 avatar and Sasuke wraps his Susanoo around it, just like in canon. Naruto makes Obito doubt who he is and manages to extract the Ten Tails as well as destroying Obito's staff. Naruto then begins combating the Ten Tails. Madara then hops on top of the Ten Tails and fights all the tailed beasts. And Naruto, being clumsy, manages to get the Nine Tails extracted from him. They then find Minato, and everything goes the same with Black Zetsu, absorbing the Nine Tails. Sasuke also gets stabbed by Madara. And this is when they meet the Sage of Six Paths, who grants them incredible powers. Naruto then receives the other half of the Nine Tails from Obito. And he also gains all the power of the tailed beasts in his consciousness, which allows him to activate Sage of Six Paths mode. Naruto then finds Ten Tails absorbed Madara fighting Mike Guy. However, Mike Guy is lying on the floor and is about to be finished off. However, just like in canon, Naruto kicks away the troop seeking orb and punches Madara, almost breaking the god tree. Madara was then met by a giant lava Rasen shuriken. This cuts the god tree in two. However, in the end, Madara absorbs the god tree and begins fighting Naruto. However, in this timeline, Naruto is actually beating him, as him being in Tensegan chakra mode with KCM2 and Sage of Six Paths mode is extremely overwhelming and he is arguably 50% stronger than his adult self. Madara then finds Kakashi and takes his Mangekyo Sharingan and finds Obito. He then takes Obito and gets his last Rinnegan. The fight then begins, however, once Madara awakens the Rinne Sharingan, Black Zetsu puts his hand through Madara and proceeds to revive Kaguya. Naruto then fully powers up once again and Kaguya is revived. Naruto in this timeline is doing the heavy hitting and Naruto is actually managing to overpower Kaguya as he is a lot stronger. Naruto and Sasuke manage to seal her away like in canon. However, it's a lot easier. This is when they eventually get back to Earth and Sasuke then puts all the tailed beasts in against Yusu as he thinks that the shinobi world is corrupt and he doesn't like Naruto's ideals as he understood where Madara was coming from apart from he thought that it was slightly different. The Sage of Six Paths sighs as he says that you, they were bound to have a last conflict. He then wishes luck to them both and leaves. They then stand on top of the stones in the final valley and then the fight then begins in Taijutsu only and Naruto is heavily outclassing Sasuke. Sasuke then activates his Mangekyo Sharingan and his Rinnegan with Tomoe and everything evens out. Sasuke punches Naruto into a wall however Naruto stands up and uses universal pull to pull Sasuke towards him. Naruto then grabs Sasuke and slams him into the ground. 
Sasuke then activates partial Susanoo and fires several arrows at Naruto. However, Naruto just throws two Rasen Shuriken, cancelling out the attacks. Sasuke then activates Perfect Susanoo and swings down his sword. However, Naruto activates KCM2, Sage of Six Paths mode, and catches the sword with his chakra arm. Naruto then throws the Susanoo up and then activates his Kuruma avatar. He then stands on Sasuke's Susanoo, activating a tailed beast ball. However, he stops as he doesn't want to kill Sasuke. Sasuke then takes his opportunity to get Naruto off him. He then flies up and takes all of the chakra of the Biju. Naruto then stacks Tensei in chakra mode on top of this and absorbs all the nature energy he can find. Naruto then uses his combined Ross and Shuriken attack. However, Naruto heavily outclasses Indra's arrow, causing Sasuke to take the brunt of the attack and Naruto only having a small scratch from the shockwave. Naruto deactivates all of his abilities and has a Taijutsu fight with Sasuke. However, due to Sasuke being so much more fatigued, he doesn't put up much of a fight and Naruto manages to pin him down when he activates Sage of Six Paths mode and uses his truth seeking orbs to pin Sasuke down. Sasuke then accepts defeat and through punching each other and having the fight, he begins to understand Naruto's perspective. Naruto then helps Sasuke up and Sakura finds them as she heals Sasuke as Naruto isn't too injured. Sasuke and Naruto undo the infinite Tsukiyomi and in this timeline they both keep their arms.